the screencast for NIM 638 final project. I'm going to start it, and I'm going to show you two things today that uh, I was able to apply my um, coursework from the Python course to in regards to my real life. So the first one is the Denali National Park um, workflow that I worked on. And uh, I'm a seasonal biotechnician for the Denali National Park and I got the GIS information um, to track their administrative overflights all over the park. And the goal for this Python project was to bring GPS flight data in from multiple systems um, and have Python move through all of that information and um, insert it into the ArcGIS geo database. And ultimately output something similar to uh, this slide here, cumulative linear density of the parts, of the flights, and then analyze that in regards to the backcountry uh, management plan and best practices areas for flights of uh, So here's the workflow. Um, first off, I need to import all the two database tools from Microsoft Access. And then convert these points to feature classes. And from those points, create lines. And then flip the lines to the park boundaries and to a buffer around the park. And then import non-spatial to non-spatial data. Um, and link that data uh, all together and then join it. Join all that data together and, and do some um, linear density analysis um, on those flights, as we saw in that last um, map. So what I'm going to show you is actually I had written a script last year, and I wanted to uh, update my, my script this year with what I've learned in Python. Um, last year I used to calculate fields. Or calculate field scripts, and this year um, I wanted to try using update cursor and compare the two and see if there really was any difference in the speed. So for the very first one, um, this is my original script, and as you can see, I've got about four add field spots, um, four add field scripts and then additionally for calculate field scripts uh, tools for add field tools and then for calculate field tools um, for every single one of the GPS tables that were within this that it didn't import a database. So then we run it and we processed uh, every single one of those tables. It added a field and then it calculated the field. And we scroll down and you can see that it took almost 42 minutes and 19 seconds to finish this. So then trying it with the update cursor script, so you can see I saw this block of, um, for every table, for every GPS table in the geo database, add all these fields, then um, if you scroll it further down, I use a cursor here uh, for all of my calculate fields instead of four separate calculate field uh, tools written into the script. So if I run it, you scroll down the bottom, you can see it does processes the the tables in the same exact way as before. This time, it only took about 26 minutes, as you can see at the bottom there. 26 minutes and 14 seconds. So that's a pretty good 
example of how upgrade cursor is uh, much faster than the calculated fields. And we're going to stick with that, that process from now on. So the next project that I worked on was this Beringia project with the Wildlife Conservation Society, looking at the new uh, the influx in um, increasing shipping traffic in the Bering Sea. And we wanted to understand how that affects the um, marine mammal populations or what potential conflicts there may be with marine mammal populations in the area. Ultimately, the red dog uh, mine map would look something like this, where we have linear densities, lines, and marine mammal points that show where there might be conflicts between the marine mammal points and the shipping lanes. So if we take a look at the file structure, uh, or the workflow structure, firstly I need to process all the CSV files that came to me through the shipping traffic and um, then import those into a geo database, merge those tables together by month, update all the rows for joining, create unique identifiers for um, joining the rows and creating lines from those points. So I'm just going to show you the very first step, which is pre-processing the CSV files, which came to me with white spaces in the titles um, within the names of the file structure, and then white spaces and special characters within the uh, headers of every single one of those, those files. So first, to get a better idea of what we're dealing with, let's look at the file structure here. Open up the file, you can see that for every year, there's a month, and for every month, there's a file for every single one of the days. And every single one of those days has a space in the title. And then uh, opening up the CSV files, you can see that um, within the CSV file, looking at the headers, white spaces, then those headered names, and then special characters. And ArcGIS cannot import special characters into its geodatabase, so these tables have to be processed first. So if I run scripts for this very first step in the workflow, uh, you can see that it's processing every file within every month for every year. And then it's going to output all of that into just one large um, file that's a lot easier to, to deal with when importing and just working with one particular workstation instead of having to loop through every single file and uh, read every single CSV. So right now, reading every single one of the CSVs and then writing a new CSV. So after running that script, if we go to the new file structure, open it up, we open up that table file, that table folder, and every single one of those files has been renamed uh, so that the white space was replaced with that underscore. And then if we open up one of these files, we can see that um, the headers have also been renamed to replace uh, white spaces with underscores and special characters with underscores. So this allows us now to import it into our GIS geodatabase for creation of a feature class. And then so on and so forth to be able to create these lines in order to assess where the, the most dense areas are um, and then see how that interacts with uh, marine mammal populations. So the marine mammals being the polar bears, the ring and bearded seal, um, walruses, bowhead whales, and beluga whales as well. So ultimately, uh, taking this Python course has been very beneficial.
essential to being able to apply it to a lot of my real world experience. Because as you can see with the uh, Rare Media workflow, that was just one step of the process. And I used Python to create um, scripts for every single one of those, those steps. And I would be happy to share that with anyone who is interested in in seeing how this project works. So thanks, Dave. This was a great class, and I was really glad to be able to take it remotely.